welcome to 12 of Towers Rig Rundowns. I'm Liam Brown, this is Steve Plummer. Hi guys. We are going to be talking about Steve's gorgeous rig today and let's just go for it. Okay, Steve, so looking guitars. forward to it. Okay, well, um, what I thought I'd do today is if I run you through the guitars to start with, mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to start with the late nine one, um, which is a, a Morton custom special, a uh, Morton Tiger custom special mm -hmm. that uh, Ken uh, built for me uh, about two years ago, in fact, three years ago now, probably. Um, and the reason that I use this mainly for live is because it's a really versatile guitar. Um, it's very stripped back, it's not something that weighs a lot, so if you're playing a two hour gig, it really, like you can wear it all day, it, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, and we also spec it up specifically to be really versatile. I play in a band, uh, Shard Lake, we're a kind of rock covers band, mm -hmm. so we will literally be playing everything from um, you know, Alana Miles and the Pretenders yeah. through to Metallica. So, you need to cover a lot so of I've got to there. cover a lot of ground very Watch. quickly, yeah. and more often than not, we'll be doing something like the Pretenders straight into Metallica. Mm -hmm. So you need to go from a really clean, beautiful, chimey sound into straight out metal and that's pretty much how the rig is set up Brilliant. it's pretty basic there's really not a lot to it um uh, but yeah the guitar this is my main life guitar and it's just gorgeous so that's it um in nice clean tones um so, get the clean? so you get a And then you can basically go from there to uh, literally at the click of a couple of switches and uh -huh. hit bread. And when you're playing live, you've maybe got five seconds in between songs. Yeah. To be able to do and what you need to do. And as quick as that, you that. Yeah, that's how, and so the rig is entirely set up. Amazing. Pretty much to do that. So the guitar's got some special features on it. Uh, I mean, apart from the fact that it's beautifully set up by Ken, um, it was also bought in honour of a good friend of mine, uh, a friend, joint friend of ours, that Ian Alexander, who passed away far too soon. Uh, so this is Lexi uh, after after Ian Alexander. Um, it has the Shard Lake crest on here, uh, which is great for catching light. Uh, <laughs> so if you're in the right place, you can catch the light and blind catch people in the catch an eyes. Absolutely. Um, um, but the main thing really, I think, is the, the wizardry that Ken built in on the circuitry. So um, both of these are coil splittable okay. um, rather than coil tap because right. it needs to be able to produce that kind of strap. Right. Tele sound. So just really quickly, could you explain the difference between coil split and coil tap? Uh, I'll do my level best. I am not a technician. Um, so coil splitting literally splits these two uh, pick up so that you only hear this one becomes or this coil. one. It becomes a true single coil. If you tap the coils, then basically what will happen is it will reduce the output of one of the coils. So it becomes kind of single coily, single but not coil quite mesh. here. Um, and it. what I need to be able to do is almost reproduce um, almost exactly a kind of strap tone on a, on a number of occasions, particularly where we're supporting and you've only got one guitar and maybe a backup. Fair. Um, so that's why these are split. But the other um, main thing is both of these are Seymour Duncan. So I've got a Seymour Duncan 59 in the in the neck, which just gives you that beautiful kind of um, beautiful warm. Just gorgeous. And then uh, here we've got a slightly higher output Seymour Duncan Invader, which is more kind of metally. Um, Pushing the amp a lot yeah. harder and get a lot more gain, but it cleans up really nicely. <laughs> which is incredible, uh, for such a high output. And then when you when you when you split it, very stressing. Um, so there's super versatile pickups um, that really really help mm -hmm. do everything that I need to do. So that's so guitar is basically one stop shop. It's going to get yeah. Everything. If I if I had to pick one guitar to do a whole gig in. This would be it, and it was it was spec and built specifically for that reason. And whether it plays like a dream or it plays absolutely terribly, it looks amazing, <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. It's like, it's well, it's interesting. The the, the Shard Lake band colours are uh, black and red, um, so blends it had to be a red guitar. It's got to be, um, yeah. and it just looks awesome on stage. It does, um, and the, you can do really cool stuff. Like um, we've got friends with photographers, so they'll quite often do um, black and white photo uh, photographs, but with mm -hmm. this red. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I have my cap here that I always wear because I'm baldy and the lights shine everywhere. Steve and so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of my one of my uh, one of my favourite uh, guitarists, Tom Tom Yale, So, so that's my main guitar, um, and it's absolutely brilliant. If I get a chance, and I do sometimes, then what I will do is I'll bring along some others. So um, I thought I'd just quickly talk you through, and again, this is really mainly for our students who are just starting to get into electric guitar to understand a little bit about the differences between um, single coils and uh, humbuckers. So this is a Stratocaster. It's not actually a Stratocaster. It's actually a bit of a mongrel guitar. Um, I don't know the history of it because I bought it third hand. But I'm pretty confident this is a, a, a made in Mexico Fender strap body. Okay. Don't know what the pickups are. It's got a, a replacement neck um, with the kind of the bronze dots uh, and some kind of what I, I, I do like the, um, the Fender machine heads because they're the insert and right yeah. and much, yeah. much stronger and more stable. Totally. It's a strap. It does what a strap does. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's, it's beautiful, clean. Some really nice kind of Hendrixy. You know? It's all of that strat stuff. So we're moving from Steve Morello into Stevie Ray Plummer kind of area. Yeah, uh, if only. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a dream? Um, but it does it does all of the you know your your, your Floyd stuff. Etc. etc. Um, and we'll even, uh, it can even be uh, teased out to do some uh, edgy stuff as well. <laughs> so that's my strat. Um, as I say, I don't know the provenance of it. I play this mainly for things like um, the pretenders, um, blues, if we're doing any kind of bluesy numbers, uh, anything that Clapton would normally do. Um, yeah. So we do likes of um, White Room, for example. Yeah. Yeah. That this is just an absolute gift for that. And be honest, is the road wear, is that genuine or is that behind? Uh, some of it's, well, again, it's difficult for me to know because I, I bought it third hand. Mm -hmm. Some of it is, is genuine. A lot of this down here is genuine yeah. from being gigged by me. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of this might actually be relicking um, to start off with. But I do play quite hard in the middle here. So mm -hmm. a lot of this, you, know, you can actually see some of this is actually purple from yeah, the pits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a kind of combination, I think. Um, but I do like Rogue One Relic stuff because you don't have to worry so much yeah. about um, dinging them when you're live. Yeah, it's almost like you, it takes away the fear of damaging it. Hell yeah. You almost get better of yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, this is my other Morton guitar uh, that Ken um, pulled together for me. Equally as gorgeous. Um, so this is just light beyond lightness before I put it on. Um, you, I think you've, you've probably heard that before. But oh, the weight of that! There is just it's, it's like nothing. It's, it's like, like a blade. That's amazing. So there's there's nothing to that guitar at all. That's you genuinely barely know you're wearing it. Well, um, I, it a bit. I do love me a telly. Yeah, and it does. Happen to have, Everyone does. Happen to have four, but shh, don't they tell me why. Um, so this just does your standard telly things. Um, very bright and sparkly. Uh, Ken, who is uh, thankfully sitting just across from me, is this a Fat Cat pickup? It's a Fat Cat T pickup. And I'm yeah. trying to remember who it's by now. It's what they call a, a big pole. Big pole, yeah. So basically my understanding of that is that because it's got bigger poles, it's not quite as bright. Because obviously tellies, especially in the British pickup, are usually really bright. Yeah. The other thing that I didn't mention on my strat is I always put brass saddles on my single coils. Okay. Um, I just think single coils and brass saddles, that's the... What, is the, what, what do you feel you gain from that? So brass, brass tends to be a bit toppier. Mm -hmm. um, and it also tends to give you, for, in my opinion, uh, a lot of this is opinion, um, more sustain. All right. So if you... This thing just rings. Yeah, it just keeps going. It just it. keeps going and going. The sustain on it and the resonance in the body, you can you're still going down. Right. So it just allows you to really, and on a telly particularly, it gives you a real snap to the sharp, yeah. really sharp. Um, the in between sound is is lovely and almost strat. It's very warm. Bit out of tune. Um, then you've got neck, necky neck, which is my favourite. Kane works with his magic and put a four-way switch in so that I can actually put them both in, in, oh in serious, so I've got a humbucker. 
So that really allows me to do some really cool stuff. So okay, so what we have here is um, two kind of sets of uh, pedals on the pedal board. We have the MIDI controller, uh, which basically operates the amp. Um, I'm relatively old and crinkly, so I need it to be nice and bomb proof. Um, whilst it could have 128 channels, I actually only use it as almost like a mini stomp box, uh, so mini pedals, if you will. Um, so this channel here is my clean channel, channel A. Channel B is crunch, so mildly dirty, um, but allows me to do a lot of gain staging. The, the C channel is basically uh, my lead channel. It tends to be set more for metal work, and this one I very rarely use because it's ultra, um, and it makes the gain really fizzy. This one here is for modulation. Um, I use this for chorus, which comes off of the amp, which I'll show you in a moment. This is my uh, solo delay pedal, uh, set very, very light, so it just thickens the tone. And then the best feature of all is my 10 dB boost pedal, which basically allows me to match volume from single coil to humbucker when I switch guitars. Uh, I use a Ibanez Weeping Demon uh, wire pedal, very, very versatile, but I basically don't move it from where it's set. Um, then the most important pedal of all, which is the tuner. You always have to have a tuner on your board. Um, I'll come back to the equalizer. I then have three kind of distortion gain levels. I have an, uh, an Ibanez Tube Screamer TS7, which basically does what a TS7 does or a Tube Screamer does. It kind of tightens the bottom end and just compresses a little bit. It just adds a little bit of gain. I then feed that into basically a, a clone clone, which is a, a Lucid FX um, clone clone. Again, that just adds another layer of gain, so it gives you kind of dirty to dirty. And then you have uh, a Big Muff Russian Pie for all of your fuzz that you may need. Um, and all of those go into the front end of the amp, so you're just driving the valves in the preamp. And then finally, in the loop, we have a tremolo pedal for two songs and a digital delay, which is set quite long, and that gives you all of the edge sounds. So then we get to the amp. So the amp is a Hughes & Kettner Grandmaster 36. Yep. Um, and the speaker cabinet is a tuba 12. It's a relatively new addition to my rig. Mm -hmm. um, it's a James Jared Nickel Blackstar tuba 12 special. Um, if you've never watched James Jared Nickel playing live, you need to go and see this man shred up and down a guitar with no pick and one pickup. I yep. mean, the guy is just yes, a he's monstrous guitar player. Yeah. Um, and he's young and he's cool and he's aggressive and oh, he's just brilliant. Yes. Um, proper aggressive blues rock player. Uh, and I fell in love with his tone, but I really like the tone of what, what, what comes out of the amp. Yeah. And so I investigated uh, what the speakers were in here, and actually, at the risk of being slightly cheeky, he, he's pretty much got in here what I had. So my, my previous rig to this was two Bomber 12s stacked on top of each other. Mm -hmm. One had a Greenback, and one had a uh, Celestian 75. Mm -hmm. And in here, he's basically got the modern version of the Greenback and a Celestian and 75 the Celestian. Brilliant. all together. Amazing. So that meant that I didn't, I, so I sold both my Wamba 12s and basically bought this along with the guitar. I, I sold the guitar uh, and basically bought the cab. Um, I love the tone out of it. It's relatively new, so it's still a little bright and, and brash, mm -hmm. but it hardly weighs anything. For a, for a 2 yeah. 12 you can literally pick it up with one hand. Wow. Now, I do a lot of gigs and I'm old, so uh, lightness and portability is key. Yes, um, so that's basically the kind of, this is the hub of my tone. The amp is just immense. Um, the big inspiration for Hughes and Kettner is Alex Lyson from Rush, because he uses H&K, has yeah. been for decades. Yeah. Um, love his tone. And it's just so versatile. Yeah, and having the two Texas speakers as well, and then that versatility again. Yeah, so basically you, the modern greenback gives you that kind of grunt in the bottom end and a little bit of midi bit, and then the 75 gives you the top end bike that comes yeah, across. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right, well Steve, thank you so well, much you for have. taking us through your rig. Really appreciate that. Not a problem. Uh, hopefully that's been confirmed to some of the guys who are maybe getting started out or maybe are wanting to upgrade where they are just now. And if you, uh, if you listen to this and you want to ask questions when we're next together, please feel free to do so. I just want to mention, you can edit this as well, but, but it's very important for young players to make sure they match the amp to the speaker. Yes, indeed. So if yeah. they, I think the, the rule is a low into high will fly, but high into low won't go. Yeah. So four ohms into an eight ohm cab will work, yeah. but don't do it the other way will fly yeah. it. Yeah. Fry so back. again, one of the reasons I love this is that sometimes you don't get a choice of what cab you're going into. Yeah. This has an automatic ohm selector. Oh, does it? Yeah. So literally, I can plug this into anything and it'll work. It'll work automatically. Which is yeah. awesome. So again, a lot of my rig is built around playing live. So if, if we're rocking up to a, an open air festival, 
and you literally somebody hands you a four by twelve and says that's what you use. And if you haven't got the right capacitors or the right ohms or whatever, you're basically goosed. With this amp, I can rock up anywhere, anywhere. plug it in, pop your right in. It will just work. How do you find it is for the valves? Is it quite sturdy? Is it I've yet to fragile? change the valves in this. This has been gigged constantly for the last four years. Yeah. I've never had a problem with it. It's not even had a service. Right. It's pretty bon I mean, I'm gentle with it. I don't go flinging it around or whatever because it's a valve amp. But at the end of the day, as long as you look after it, mm -hmm. um, it's it's pretty robust. Amazing. The only downside to these, I would say, is that I don't know if you want to put your hand here. Yeah, but it gets it's quite warm. very yeah. hot. <laughs> yeah, it does get warm. Um, you could probably fry an egg on that at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it works, and that's all that really matters. Thanks, guys, and uh, do tune in for another episode of Rig Rundown in the not too distant future. Cheers.